Perfect. Okay. Hello. Shalom. Um, I just wanted to come like, as we are getting ready to go into um, a deliverance workshop. Um, I want to make sure we're actually prepared. I am super excited that you all decided to choose the learn more about deliverance as opposed to um, the fasting and the getting deliverance right so there was an option do you want to do fasting and prayer do you want to do a fasting and prayer workshop a um deliverance service where you know we're casting out demons or do you just want to do um a workshop that's actually going to teach you about deliverance and you all chose to learn more about deliverance give me one second i am going to see it's been a while since i've been on here but i'm going to see if i can tag some people here um I don't know if this is if this works the same way, but um, I am just tagging people. I think that's what I'm doing. It says invite. It's possible that it changed, but what I want to do to get us ready for that workshop because deliverance is a big thing. Like it's, it's something that we should not take lightly, right? Like we are literally casting out demons from their home, the place that they um has probably have probably been in since like we were born um the place that they're comfortable they put in a whole bunch of work you know a whole bunch of roots and stuff and um it's it's nothing that we should take lightly so i want to make sure that as we are going into the workshop that i have covered as much as i can so that you will have the the full understanding the knowledge the wisdom around deliverance um, I do want to share that here recently, I spoke with a sister who has gone through some deliverance. And um, as I was speaking to the sister, this whole, this sister's whole mood, she she looked different. Her her mood was, was different. Um, her, her attitude was different. And this is the result of deliverance. Like you have things inside of you that are keeping you stuck, that are keeping you um, blocked, that are keeping you, um, you know, in poverty, with lacking, that are keeping you um, in self-doubt. Like this is whole goal, you know, is to get in us, the, the demons of spirits, entities, to get in us and to um, to manifest whatever that entity is. You know, it can be the spirit of fear, the spirit of um, overwhelm, the spirit of, of hatred, the spirit of anger. Once it's in us, it then wants to live its best life inside of us or through us, right? So it's important that we are able to really um, tune in to who we are, like what is us and what's not of us. Like when are we acting out of character? When we're able to do that, we're then able to start pinpointing like what our struggles are, what the demons and entities are, and then we can start tackling them one by one. But again, um, as I was speaking with the sister on the Zoom call, she looked she looked different. She looked so different to me. I didn't like I didn't express how different she looked, but she looked different to me. Um, she was in a better mood. Um, her whole mindset had had shifted, and this is what deliverance does. It allows you to really just be who you are created and designed to be without all of the baggage, okay? So today I wanted to come and talk about three ways you can determine or three ways to determine if you need deliverance. Um, hopefully just as we are going into the workshop, I'm, I'll be able to come in here um, live just really quick, maybe like 10, 15 minutes and just talk a little bit more about the limits. Because again, I do, I really want you to have the full, have a full understanding um, of what it is so that you can get comfortable with it. Okay. So the first thing um, that you need to pay attention to or how to determine if you need deliverance is if you cannot stop um, the sin, the lifestyle, whatever it is that you are trying to not do, um, if you cannot stop that on your own. Now, some people in life, you will see that, okay, they see that they are addicted to something or um, they're, you know, they have some sort of lifestyle. And once they get that conviction or once they realize that the addiction or whatever, the sin um, is no longer serving them, they're able to just change on their own, right? They they have um, more power over that demon, that spirit, that entity than, um, than it does over them. So you see some people will go in life without like needing deliverance. But if you are someone who you literally do not want to do this, you know that it's wrong, like you have been trying um for years, for, for months, like you have been trying to really focus on not doing this one thing and you continue to do it. I'm telling you that there is a force behind you doing that. It's, it's not, it's not, 
deliverance is something just like fasting is something that you have to experience in order to really like feel the benefits of it like i can't express it um we can do testimonies all testimonials all day but it's not until you actually see the change in your life and you see how you're different. You see how you think different. You see how your thoughts are clearer. You see how you don't have that urge to, to do, you know, that, that one sin. Or, you know, you see how your mood is different. Um, it literally changes your life because that force is not there forcing you to do that. So if, if you are unable to stop the thing, the sin, the lifestyle, whatever, stop whatever, really. Like, it, it's not even that it's a sin. Maybe you are someone who is... um something that you're trying to change that, you know, is not sinful. You just don't want to do that anymore. And, and as you are trying to change, you see that you literally cannot do it. Um, so that is a way for you to determine if there's some deliverance needed, is that if you cannot change whatever it is that you're trying to change on your own. Now know that um, it's not as simple as getting deliverance and then just, you know, being a new person. You have to work towards being that person, right? You have to um, embody, you have to... Um, what's the word? You have to take on the habits of the person that you are trying to be. So if you're someone who did, who did, who um, struggles with like gluttony or overeating or something like that, and you say, okay, well, I've been struggling with this for years. And then you go and you get deliverance, know that that force will no longer be there. Like you will not um, have a strong urge to overeat. You will be content with what you have eaten. However, you have to understand that for however many years you have been overeating and your body, your mind, your subconscious is all used to overeating. So although that force is not there, the habit is still there. And to give you an example of, of with, with me, um, I remember doing a Daniel fast. It's something that I wanted to let go of was the sweets, like the sugars and things like that. And, you know, going through deliverance and all of that, that's trying to just make sure that um, cause you know, addiction, you addiction is, is a spirit, but you can be addicted to something, to different things. So if you're someone who's struggling with alcohol, usually people who struggle with alcohol are, um, some sort of like heavy, obvious type of addiction, they stop the alcohol on their own, but that addiction spirit is still there. So that addiction spirit then tries to find another way to manifest. So then it goes to like sweets, right? So as you are trying to get rid of an addict addictive spirit, it will then manifest in another way, right? But as I was letting go of the sweets, I had a habit of buying the sweets. So every time I would go to the grocery store, I would buy sweets. And as I was eating the sweets, it's like, I could not eat it. Like my body, like it was, it was just, it was crazy. My husband was like, why are you buying like the sweets? And like, you're not eating them. Like, they're just like sitting there. I'm like, I can't eat it. Like I literally like my body as I'm trying to eat it, my body is like trying to like get it out of my system. And this is because the entity, the, the, the thing, the force that was causing me to, to do that was gone. However, the habit in me was still there. So I was still used to going to the grocery store, you know, picking up the sweets and then taking them home and then eating them. That was still there. So then I had to train, I had to train my mind, my subconscious, like my habits into understanding that I am no longer um, needing this, this sugar, this addiction. And I have to change that. Like I have to um, fill that void with something new, with something positive, with a good habit. Okay, so know that there's going to be some work that you're still going to have to do if you're trying to really elevate, if you're trying to really grow and prosper and become the person that you are called to be. It's not just getting that demon cast out, it's um, walking out that deliverance, okay? So the second thing that you're going to have to do, or the second thing that you that you can, the second way you can determine if you need deliverance is if it's something that is in your bloodline. If it's something that you struggle with, your mom struggle with, then your your sister struggled with and your great grandma struggled with, like it's a generational curse, right? It's something that has legal grounds to your bloodline. And you have to understand that when you are coming up against a generational curse, y'all, y'all are, y'all are coming up against generations, like each, and it's not just like, say like two generations, right? Like it's not just two, you have to go deep into all of what that generation has done. Like it's years and years of, of, of things that's all put on you that you realize um, is not righteous. You realize you don't want it. You don't want to live this way. Um, it goes against, you know, what you believe. It goes against your morals and you're just trying to live holy and righteous. But this is something that's been on your bloodline for generations. And is it, it is extremely strong. Can you? 
break that curse, break the generational curse? Yes, you can. Just know that it's something that's going to take some effort, right? It's going to take some work for you to do. But that is another way to determine if you need deliverance. If you're dealing with a generational curse, you're then going to have to do some repentance, repentance for what you've done, repentance for what your ancestors, your forefathers have done. You're then going to have to break the legal grounds, close the doors, close the window. If the, if the generational curse is there, it's because somebody did something. Like there's legal grounds to you, to that bloodline. So you didn't have to break that that um, that legal grounds, and then you can go into deliverance. As you're going into deliverance, and you're telling that demon to come out to cast, to, you're casting it out. There's nothing keeping it there. Like it doesn't have any legal grounds. It's like, no, I repented. I broke that legal grounds. You know, the father forgave me. Whatever. You have no legal grounds to be here, right? So that's another way to determine if you need deliverance. The third way to determine simply is if the Holy Spirit is telling you you need deliverance. We ignore the Holy Spirit so much, like it. The, the father tries to, to speak, to reach us in so many different ways, but we just, we have life going on. Like it's hard for us to, to pay attention. It's hard for us, you know, to, um, it's, it's hard for him to get our attention as we are going through life. But if your soul and your spirit is like suffering and it's crying out and you're like, what can I do? And then you keep hearing about deliverance. And that resonates with you. And that's what you need to be doing. Like, that's what you need to be looking into. So those are three things that you can um, pay attention to. Like three things, three ways to determine if you are needing deliverance is if you can't stop the thing, the sin, the entity, the lifestyle on your own and you've tried. If it's something that's generational, something that you and other people, um, other people in your in your bloodline, your family has struggled with. And also if the Holy Spirit has just been telling you, you need some deliverance, like there's there's something more here. There's a reason why you can't do this. There's a reason why you can't elevate. There's a reason why you're, you're lacking and you can't prosper. The reason why, you know, you're overeating and why you can't, you know, be healthy. Listen to the Holy Spirit because it will convict you. It will give you the information that you need in order to make um, the right choices and the right decision, decisions. So um, again, I just wanted to come and talk to you all a little bit about the deliverance. Know that I will be showing up more just to get us ready for the workshop. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I will see you all soon.